Thank you. If you have your Bibles or on your phone or in print, would you please take them? We're looking to John's Gospel, chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. John chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. Hasn't it been a wonderful time in his presence today? Amen? We have felt his presence, and thank you for your worship of him today. Let's stand together in honor of God's word. Gospel of John, chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor, and Mary served, and Martha served, while Lazarus among those reclining at the table with him. And then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Jesus Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected, why, why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. And he did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he, he used to help himself to what was put into it. And Jesus responds in verse 7, leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. For you will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Let's pray. Father, in these moments we ask that as you have been faithful to us each time we have gathered and how you've been faithful to us as we have worshipped you today, I pray that you might speak to each one of our hearts today. And may we pause in the midst of all the busyness that we've been a part of and will be a part of. May we just pause in your presence. And may we just tell you how much we love you. And how thankful we are for all you've done for us. And we'll be sure to give you all the honor and the glory and the praise for all that you do in this time. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. This morning I want to tell you a story about a king who had two sons. The king's name was King George V of the United Kingdom. And his two sons were David and Albert. Well, David was the oldest of the two boys and he was heir to the throne of England. And Albert, his younger brother, he had a stuttering problem. In fact, they made a movie about his life in 2010, his Academy Award winning movie called The King's Speech. Some of you may have seen that. Well, the oldest son, David, he became king when his father died, and he took the name King Edward VIII. His problem was not a stuttering problem. His problem was a relationship problem. For King Edward VIII was in love with a married woman. Her name was Wallace Simpson. Now she had already been married and divorced once and she was presently married again and she wanted to be divorced again so that she could marry King Edward VIII. But that was not possible. For the King of England, being the head of the Church of England, could not marry a twice-divorced commoner and still be king. And she certainly could not be queen. So what did he do? From the history books, we learned that after only 325 days, the King of England abdicated the throne. And this is what he said. He said, I found it impossible to carry the heavy burden of responsibility without the help and the support of the woman I love. And I ask myself, are you kidding me? I mean, seriously. He gave up the throne of England. He gave up being king to marry a twice divorced commoner with the name Wallace. 
Does, does that make any sense to you? Oh, the things people do in the name of love. I mean, you could create your own list from tattoos that they place on to, for many people, they have to undo those tattoos after a while when they switch to a different partner, or to building magnificent structures like the Taj Mahal, or to even inventing something like the man who invented the garbage disposal. He did it out of love for his wife who hated to take out the garbage. I think maybe he didn't want to take out the garbage. <laughs> to, to crime sprees, to feats of great strength. All people, you name it, people have done it for love. Crazy, impractical, senseless, reckless, unimaginable things in the name of love. In John chapter 12, I. I think that's probably what everybody in the room must have been thinking. When Mary breaks into the normal flow of that dinner party and she comes and she kneels at the feet of Jesus. And then of all things, she, she brings out this almost priceless jar or box of first century perfume. They tell us that the gift amounted to the, was about 12 ounces, about a Roman pound. They tell us in John's gospel that it was expensive. It was a, equivalent to a whole year's wages. It probably was her, her security box. It was what she had saved up for future emergencies. And she took that box of pure nard, a very expensive and fragrant oil from, they tell us, a plant in the mountains of northern India. She didn't bring out a, an imitation. She, she didn't bring out a copy. She didn't bring out a knockoff fragrance. She didn't pick the cheap perfume. But she brings out the very best, the most extravagant, the most expensive ointment of that day. And what did she do? She took it and she broke it open. And Mary just doesn't dab a few drops on Jesus' wrist or behind his neck. But what did she do? She pours every ounce on Jesus. Get this. She poured every ounce over Jesus' feet. And when she did that, everybody in that room, they must have been stunned. It was like time was standing still. No, no one could really catch their breath and, until that, that aroma of the perfume filled the room. And it snapped people back into that moment of reckless love. You see, in John chapter 12, this action of Mary... This act of worship, this act of generosity, this act of impracticability is really the smell of reckless love that she had for her Lord. And when you think about it, she had reason to love Jesus, didn't she? Because Mary, she knew the, the difference between the smell of death and disappointment and the smell of love. For it wasn't that long ago that her brother Lazarus had gotten ill and he took sick very quickly and, and before they even knew it, he was gone, he was dead. And Mary and her sister Martha, they, they wrapped Lazarus' body up in the burial cloths and, and with the help of some friends, they, they laid his body in a cave-like tomb and then they rolled that stone in front of of the entrance of that tomb. And for four days, Lazarus decayed. Rigor mortis set in. The, the process of returning to the dust from which he came was well underway after four days. And my friends, it was a smelly, distasteful, unpleasant experience. But then, 
Aren't you thankful in the Bible when it says, but then? But then Jesus shows up in Bethany and Jesus comes there to come to see his friends. He comes there to do what no one else could do. They came to the town of Bethany, Mary's hometown. And Mary and her, and her sister Martha, they, they honestly, they aren't real pleased with Jesus. Why have you waited so long? Why didn't you come? What took you so long to get here? I mean, but seriously, what do you do? There were no Uber drivers around. There were no taxis. There was no train or bus or plane or any other means whereby we've come here. Back in that first century, travel took time and death happened so quickly. But Jesus, but Jesus, but Jesus hasn't come just to grieve the loss of his friend. Jesus has come to make all things new. Jesus had come not just to stop, but to reverse the process of decay. And Jesus said to them, take away the stone from the tomb. And I'm sure that all the friends and Mary and Martha, when Jesus said, they said, oh, no, no, don't do that, Jesus. I mean, it's been four days, Jesus, don't do that. The, the newer translations kind of clean it up for us so nicely. The scriptures tell us, by this time, there's a bad odor. I kind of like the way the King James translates it. By this time, he stinketh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> by this time, he stinketh. Yeah, four days dead in a tomb. Yes, you would stink. And Jesus comes. And Jesus says, take away the stone. And then he says, Lazarus, come out. Picture in your mind, here comes Lazarus. Still wrapped up in his burial cloths. And I'm sure that Jesus said, not only come out, but they said, unwrap him. Take off the grave clothes. He doesn't need them anymore. Why? Because he is alive. And Jesus and Mary knew. She knew the difference between the smell of death and the smell of love. And she had reason to pour her priceless perfume on the feet of Jesus. You know what's amazing to me as I read this passage of scripture? As John tells his story, he, he doesn't have Mary say a single word. She, she doesn't tell us why. She, she doesn't try to explain it. She doesn't talk about her love and her joy. She just does something. She just worships Jesus. She just pours out her love for Jesus in a tangible way, in a beautiful sacrifice of her resources and her love for the Lord. In her gift that she's pouring out here in this story, her gift is her way of yelling from the mountaintop, Jesus is worth it all. Her action, her worship, it's about giving, it's about honoring, it's about adoring, it's about loving Jesus. And you know, she's not seeking anything in return. She's already received blessing upon blessing because her previously dead, lifeless, smelly brother is right there at the table. Sharing a meal with Jesus. And as she looks over, she can, she can see the sparkle in his eyes. 
And she sees the smile on his face. She, she hears his laughter and the joy in his voice. And, and, and she, could, she could reach out and touch him if she wanted to. And Lazarus, her brother, was dead, but now he's breaking bread with Jesus. What else could she do but just worship Jesus? No strings attached, no expectations, no reservations. It's just the smell of, of reckless love. And you and I come here this morning. We, we don't come to worship because it somehow earns us points with God or just because it makes us feel better. We, we don't come here to worship simply to be entertained, being a spectator, sitting out there while they're up here doing their Christian performance. No, 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 no. Worship is, is about more than having someone just move me so that I will eventually express my love to Jesus. No. -uh. You know, worship, what it is, it's, it's about us coming to the place where we understand who Jesus is. Who is Jesus? He's the Almighty. He's the Son of God. He's the creator of this whole universe. And by the way, your creator as well. He's the wonderful counselor. He is the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is our great high priest. He is the author and finisher of our faith. Get this, he is the one who ever lives to make intercession for you. Right now he's praying for us. He is the precious lamb of God. He is the good shepherd. He is the lion of Judah. He is the bright and morning star. He is the way and the truth and the life. He is the great I am. Whatever you need Jesus to be to you today, he says, I am whatever you need me to be. Who is this Jesus? He is the King of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. And how can we do anything short of worshiping him because of who he is? But we also need to worship him understanding what he's done for us. The Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, he wrote these words beginning in verse 8, and Jesus made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. He did that for you. He did that for me. And what can we do but worship him when we think of his great sacrifice that he has made for every one of us? But we also need to worship him, understanding all that he is presently doing for us. Amen? He's not finished with us. He's still working on our behalf. He is not only our savior, aren't you thankful? But he's also our sanctifier, amen? He is the one who cleanses us and purifies us and fills us with his Holy Spirit. He is not only our sanctifier, but he is our sustainer. He is the one who walks beside us each and every day. He is the one who holds us up. He is the one who strengthens us. He's the one who guides and directs us. He is with us each and every day. And he is the one who promises that I will give you joy and peace and hope and cleanse blessing and strength and blessing upon blessing. Woo, how can we help but praise him? That's what worship is about. Worship is not, listen, worship is not about us just being blessed. Well, we had a good worship service today. I was really blessed. 
No, that's, it, it's more than that. Worship is not only about us being blessed, but worship is about us blessing God by worshiping him, by praising him, by glorifying him, thanking him for all that he has done and all that he is doing in our lives now. Amen. They had not done that much for me. Oh, my friend, wake up. If you don't think he's not done something for you, open your eyes, open your hearts, because he wants to continue to do some amazing things in your life because he loves you and he cares for you and he's given himself for you. In fact, the scripture tells us in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, listen to these words, for how great... How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Isn't that great? I was reading that verse one day and and I just paused and started thinking about it. How great is the love the the Father has lavished on us. And so I did a little research, did a little study, and realized that that word there could be translated, how great is the love the Father has freely given us, bestowed graciously to us, supplied abundantly for us. Those are all good, aren't they? Amen? but I like lavished. So I started thinking about that. I just like to say the word lavished. I'm gonna start trying to say that at least once a day, lavished. Just just say it, lavished. Can you say just la- lavished? Say it, doesn't, it sound, doesn't that feel good? Lavished, so, he lavished. Well, you just lavished love on me. So I started thinking about that. So many times Holy Spirit speaks to me in visual things that I, and I know my mind doesn't always work like a normal person's mind, but it, it comes to me in pictures. So I was thinking about that. Oh, I, I've known all my life how much you love me, Jesus. All I have to do is look to the cross. I, I know how much you love me, but you also love everybody else too, so. I kind of defeated it a little bit. (laughs) I was thinking about that. How, How great is the love the Father has lavished on me, on me, on you. I started thinking and a picture came to my mind. I don't know why it did, but it just came to my mind. And this picture of a dump truck, you know what a dump truck is? I'm not talking about one of these dump trucks that just you drive down along the road and beside you. I'm, t- I'm talking about one of these big dump trucks. I'm, I'm talking about a big, ju- now I want you to imagine, I want you to, I want you to picture in your mind a big dump truck. Can you do that? Picture in your mind, I, I'm talking a, a huge, dump truck. How many of you are doing that? Are you picturing it in your mind? I'm talking, listen, let me help you here. I'm talking about a dump truck that is 24 feet tall. I'm talking up to these, whatever they're called, to those things. I'm talking a dump truck that tall. I'm talking about a dump truck that is 50 feet long. How long would that be? Hang on just a minute. Let me tell you, 50 feet. go back that way further. It's that long, okay? You have that in your mind. I'm talking about a dump truck that is 30 feet wide. Let me give it to you. I think I might be, let's try this. (laughs) 
move back that way just a little bit, okay? Now I'm talking, listen, I'm talking about a dump truck that the bed of that dump truck is this big, as big as this platform. I'm talking about tires that are 13 feet high. Okay, you have that in your mind. Can you imagine that? How many of you can see it? Can you see it in your mind? Well, some of you can't see it, so look at it. That, that's what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking about like a caterpillar. What is that, a, a 797F if I know my dump trucks right? It, it's actually written on the side of it. That's how I knew that. I'm talking about a dump truck that big. Okay, you have that in your mind. Now I want you to picture this, if you will. I want you to picture those dump trucks backing up to the gates of heaven and God opening the gate and it's being filled up with the love of Jesus. And it feels not just halfway, not just three-quarter way. I'm talking about it's put it back up there for a minute, just the, the picture of that dump truck. I'm talking about all the way to the top of that dump truck. And it's so filled to the top of that that the love of Jesus is just pouring over the sides of that dump truck. Do you see that? Do you see that in your mind now? Now, this, I want you to see this. I want you to see this. And here you are. And God says... go dump some love on him and so the driver backs that dump truck up beep 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 and that that gate starts coming up and the, the the bed starts coming up and the gate starts opening up and here on you comes the father's love how great is the love the father has lavished on you It's so great, it knocks you off your feet. His love for you, your name on it, special delivery by God to you. How great is the love the Father has lavished on you. And he just pours it all over you. And, and you're finally able to stand up and you're able to wipe your eyes and the dump truck pulls off. And once you can see... You look down and there's dump truck after dump truck after dump truck after dump truck filled with God's love for you. That's lavished. How great, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called what? children of God and that is what we are if you ever doubt who you are that means that you bear his nature you bear his name you're a resonance of his spirit <laughs> you're a resonance of his spirit once you were a slave to sin, but now you're no longer, you're a child of God. I hear some people say, well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. Well, I think I know what they mean, but the only problem is they're wrong. Once you have received his love, once you've received his forgiveness, once you've opened your heart and your life to him, you're not just a good old rotten dirty sinner. You are now a child of God. Been given a new name, been implanted with a new nature, his Holy Spirit. <laughs> and get this, get this. The scripture tells us that God did this for us before we ever did anything or before we ever said anything or before we ever committed anything to him. Paul wrote in Romans chapter eight, verse, chapter five, verse eight, he says this, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, While we were still sinners, Christ died 
for us. That's what God is like. That's what the Bible says that God's love is like. And, and the only thing that we can do, what can we do? Well, I'd like to pay for some of that love, God. No, 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 no. The only thing we can do is receive it. The only thing we can do is respond to his love. And how do we respond? We respond with our love. We respond with our worship because he first loved us. And John points out to us that Mary, that's what she was doing. She comes with humility. She comes with total surrender. In fact, the passage tells us that Mary not only poured out the oil on Jesus' feet, but what did she do after that? She then wiped his feet with her hair. You understand what she was doing? For some of you, the hair just hangs down. That's no big deal. But in Jesus' day, for a woman to undo her hair in front in the presence of men, that was unheard of. But Mary says, I don't care. What he's done for me, what? She unwraps her hair and she gets on her feet and she wipes her the feet of Jesus with her hair. And I wonder sometimes how we let our own pride and what other people think about us hold us back from just surrendering everything to him of just being able to come to him with humility and love and adoration and appreciation. And we just come to Jesus and we say, Jesus, I just want to praise you. I just want to worship you. I just want to thank you for all that you've done for me. And in this passage, Mary, I don't think Mary really understood or realized all that she has done for Jesus or all that this meant to us, her. We see that she just came and did it out of love and adoration. She just recklessly worshiped and sacrificially offered her thanks, her worship to Jesus. But Jesus says, no, 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 Mary's done much more than that. It wasn't her intention, it wasn't her plan, but, but Jesus says, you know what Mary's done? Mary's anointed me for my impending death and burial. In fact, in verse 7 of, of John chapter 12, Jesus says, leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You see, in John chapter 12, Jesus is headed straight for the cross. This, this, this stopover in Bethany is is just a prelude to his trip to Calvary. Golgotha is where he's headed. And what's going to happen there for Jesus is suffering and pain and death. And through his sweat and his suffering and his violence, right there, right before all of us, is the a, is a love of God on total display. Love is being lifted up for the world to see at the cross. I like how the Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. He said, walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us. Now watch this, watch this. Walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a what? A fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The, the, the death of Jesus. A fragrant offering. A sacrifice. The broken body of Christ offered to us as a broken jar of perfume for us. 
And now because of Jesus sacrificing himself, now his love makes our forgiveness possible. Amen? His life makes our freedom possible. His life makes our loving possible. His death makes our living worthwhile. His fragrant offering makes our worship aroma that is pleasing to God. Don't ever forget that, that God's the giver. He's the source. He's the initiator. He's the one who gave his life for us first. He's the one that gave himself as a gift to us. But listen, listen, God is also open to receiving gifts from us and of course the gift that he desires most is the gift of ourselves the gift that we bring to him is our worship our gratitude our praise our lives i'm going to ask you to imagine something once again not just a dump truck but i want you to imagine this can you imagine this morning that you you your life yourself as a gift of love to Jesus today in a visible tangible way Let's just tell Jesus how much we love him, how thankful we are for all that God has done for us through his son, Jesus Christ. Today, let's join Mary in pouring out our worship to God, understanding that the reckless, passionate, priceless, extravagant fragrance that he wants to receive today is you, your love, your adoration, your surrender to him. In just a few moments, we're going to be receiving communion together. But before we do that, I don't know about you, but I think we just need to take some time to worship him. What do you think? I think we just need to take some time just to thank him and praise him for who he is. Praising him for what he's done for us. Thank him and praise him for what he's doing in us and what he's doing through us. Today, could we simply bring our gift of love to Jesus and say here it is Jesus I give myself to you nothing held back no reservations because of all you've done for me Jesus I can't help but just give myself to you there may be some of you we would like to spend some time at an altar of prayer or around these steps or around these fronts. We don't give you time to do that before we have communion. Is that all right? Because the first thing we want to do is we want to give him the praise and the worship that he deserves. Amen. Would you stand together with me? And it is Nick leads us. If you'd like to come and spend some time, maybe in your pew or your seat there or down at the front, just feel free just to come and let's worship him for all that he's done for us today. Let's worship him today. I worship you, almighty God, for there is none like you. I worship you, O oh Prince of peace that is what I want to do 
to sing that in just a moment we're going to sing that again there's others coming we're going to wait for you to come you may want to just use that place where you're standing just as a place of worship to him and as we sing this course let's just let him know how much we love him and how much we thank him for all that he's done for us there's room here at the steps or right in the front if you want to come. Let's sing it again to him. Let's worship him together. You may be here today and maybe you haven't made a total surrender of your heart and life to Jesus. You recognize mentally what he did for you, but in your heart you've never made that total surrender of everything to Jesus. You know, you've, you've kind of just dabbed a little perfume on his wrist or on his neck, but you've never broken open the whole bottle. <laughs> you've never just poured out everything to him. I think today would be a great time to do that, don't you? And as we pray together, I want us to pray for one another, but most important, I want us to also just make sure that everything in our lives totally yielded, surrendered to Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the wonderful privilege that we have of coming together as your family. We're thankful, Lord, how you've brought us together from around the world to celebrate here in Indianapolis. We've come today, we've come in this week with a, a hunger and an anticipation of you doing something special in the Church of the Nazarene. And Lord, we ask today that you would just pour out your spirit in a fresh and a new way upon every one of us. And then, Lord, it begins when we recognize who you are and we praise you for what you've done and what you're doing. And so today, Lord, we just come before you and we say, thank you, Jesus. You are Lord of our lives. 
You are more than just a, a byproduct of our lives. You are the very essence of who we are. And Lord, today we just thank you and we praise you. We thank you and praise you for your great love that you have lavished upon us time after time after time after time. How you've given us blessing upon blessing. And Lord, we can't help but thank you and praise you today. Lord, I pray that you would help us as a church of the Nazarene to get our eyes off of the things of this world and the culture that we live in. And Lord, get our eyes upon you as the one who has done everything for us. May you be Lord of our lives. May you be Lord of our homes. May you be Lord of our churches. May you be Lord of our denomination. May you, Lord, be high and lifted up and exalted in this place and do it in our hearts and our lives. Lord, I pray. I pray for every person here. Lord, those who may be struggling in their walk with you, Lord, would you draw them to yourself today? May they, may they see how much you love them and all that you want to do for them. Lord, I pray for those today who are discouraged and, and maybe even a little depressed about life. Lord, would they see, may, may you help them to open their eyes and may they see you. You're still on the throne. You, you haven't abdicated the throne. You're still on the throne. And you want to reign and rule in their hearts and their lives. You are their healer. You are their strength. You are their provider. And you are the one who can lift up their hearts and their souls today. Would you do that through your spirit? Lord, I pray for those who may have walked away from you. They're here today, but yet the walk is cold and their walk and their relationship is not what it should be. Lord Jesus, would you just... Would you set their hearts on fire today? May there be a passion and a love for you like they've never had today. And Lord, we pray that you would just come to us as your church, us as your people, right here on this Sunday morning. Oh God, do something new in us. Something that will change us forever. It will change the future of our churches and the future of our cities and the future of our countries, maybe even the future of our world. And so, Lord, we, we look to you. We seek you. We wait before you. We worship you. We praise you. We adore you. We exalt you today. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your work that you're doing all across this convention center. And Lord, what you have started today, may you continue to, continue to work out even the rest of this time that we're here in Indianapolis. May you be exalted. May you be lifted up. May Jesus be Lord of his church and be Lord of us today, we pray. In Jesus' wonderful, glorious name, amen. And amen. 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 We're going to invite you to be seated. You can continue to pray if you'd like, but if you'd like to go back to your seats, we're going to prepare our hearts for communion at this time. Praise his name. We come here today to prepare our hearts and our spirits to celebrate together the sacrament of Holy Communion. I would ask those who are going to be serving if you would uh, take your places. And in just a moment, they'll be distributing the wafers and the juice to you. It's in a cup. The wafers at one end, the juice is at the other end. Make sure you do the wafer first and then turn it over. And we're going to ask those that are serving, if you would, to go on and begin to distribute those. 
And as you receive yours, do not open it yet. Let's wait till everyone has served, been served, okay? Wait till everyone has been served, and then we will partake together. As you receive the cup of juice, a symbol of his shed blood, and the wafer, a symbol of his broken body. May we just continue to stay in this spirit of worship for who he is, for what he's done, and for all that he's doing in our lives. Let's continue to prepare our hearts, and when everyone has been served, we'll partake together. was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you had me in your side. So you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe, broke my chains, freed my soul. For the first time I had hope Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied Thank you, Jesus, he has washed me wide Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. Yeah. 
into glorious life. Glory to his name, precious name. Glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart was a Thank you, Sharon. Amen. The communion supper instituted by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a sacrament which proclaims his life, his sufferings, his sacrificial death, his resurrection, and the hope of his coming again. It shows forth the Lord's death into his return. This is a means of grace by which Christ is present by his spirit. It's to be received with reverent appreciation and gratefulness for all that he's done for us. What he's done for us in Christ. And all of those who are truly repentant, forsaking their sins, believing in Christ for salvation, all of you are invited to participate in the death and the resurrection of Jesus. We come to the table that we may be renewed in life and salvation. We come as one together in his spirit. And unity is his church. And we confess our faith that Christ has died Christ has risen. Christ will come again. And we come to celebrate. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this sacred moment. For over 115 years and 30 general assemblies, we have begun your work at, our, at your table. We're grateful the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us and we are grateful that we have seen in jesus truth and love and grace and light and today we worship you lord sanctify these elements that they may bring near to us the reality of who you are and may, may we dwell in this time and allow you in a fresh and a new way to dwell in us. So much so that we'll just not be able to stop telling others about you and your love. Lord, may there be a joyful response on our part to that which honors and pleases you. Thank you, Lord, for this moment, for this place, for this assembly. And may your glory be felt and seen not only now, but all week long, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Today we gather at this, his table, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who by the Spirit was anointed to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captive, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Christ came and establish the new covenant for forgiveness of sins. And today we live in the hope of his coming again. And so as we hold these emblems, we are reminded that on the night that he was betrayed, that he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and he said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this and remembrance of me. Take now and eat, and may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for us, preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Let's eat together and be thankful.
And likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from it, all of you. For this is a blood of my covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. The blood, the, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. May it preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Drink this now in remembrance that Christ died for you. And be thankful. Let's drink together. As we close this service, I'd like for us to pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. And this is what I'd like for you to do. I'd like to invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer in your own language. And we will pray in unison. So you who are doing English, don't race off on me. Let's give our brothers and sisters time to say it in their language as well, okay? Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's worship him together. Amen. Amen. Jesus is Lord. May he continue to be the Lord of not only our individual lives, but may he be the Lord of our gathering. Amen. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would so fill us that the fragrance of Jesus would just ooze out of us and that we would be the aroma of Christ, that you would be the aroma of Christ to those who are perishing and who those who already know him, may we be the aroma of Christ. And as we go filled with his spirit, making him Lord of our lives, we go to spread his fragrance everywhere. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for your presence with us today. Thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Lord, we offer ourselves once again to you. May it be a, a beautiful gift of ourselves to you. And Lord, I pray that you would so fill us that as we go, that we would be your fragrance, your aroma to one another and to our world, wherever we are. And we'll give you praise and glory and honor for all that you're going to do. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.